Welcome back to my channel. The last video I did was more the basics and if you do the basics well, you can grow corals. But this one is sort of more pro tips on how to get the best coloration and growth out of your corals. This is the sort of extra 5% you need if you want to really grow your corals. A lot of these tips are relatively well known, but there is a couple of my theories that I use to grow my corals. And that's what this video is all about, how I grow my corals. Okay, the first one is maintaining a higher pH. You can see here, my pH is about 8.25. It's not at its peak yet. It's still going up for the day. I use a two part solution here, which is designed to increase your pH. This is my lows throughout the night. It goes down to about eight. And this is my highs. It sits around 8.3. But you can see here, there's a big window where it sits above 8.2 for about eight hours during the day. Feeding corals. I know I said on the last video, I'm not gonna feed my corals, but there is some benefits on feeding corals. I'm gonna add the coral food and the cell con to my fish food. And then with the stuff that the fish don't eat, I'll then put a little bit more tank water in, let it sit for a while. And then I'm going to turkey baste it all over my corals. There's a very fine balance on overfeeding and what the corals actually need. Whereas if I feed too much, I will get cyanobacteria and I will get some nasty algae. But if I don't feed, then the corals won't look as colourful as when I do. So it's a very fine balance between the two. And I suppose I'm still just feeding the fish and the extra um, extra nutrients from the fish food and the other bits and pieces that I've put in there will then help feed the corals. This is the dry food that I've soaked in silicon. I'm still doing this by hand just because I don't want it all to go over the overflow. Um, and it's working quite well. The fish seem to really like it. So I'm still doing this at the moment and then I'll add the rest of the fish food in. Going back to what I was saying before about the pH, I was dosing Kalkwatsa beforehand and I was dosing that throughout the night, but I've taken that off because I'm dosing the two-part solution with the extra pH buffer, which is raising my pH nicely and keeping it at 8.3. Here's all the liquid left after feeding the fish their food. So I'm now I'm going to feed this to the corals. You can add a little bit more coral food to that liquid. And then I'm going to turkey baste it all over the corals. I've also turned off the return pump at this point. So all the food stays within the water and it's just getting blown around and the corals can take it up instead of it going over the overflow. I think this is definitely helping with my polyp extension, but one negative from this is it's definitely raising my nutrients. So if your nutrients are super high, don't do this, throw this food away. But if they're low, then this is a great way of feeding your corals and upping your nutrients as well. If you're low on nutrients, I would definitely do this before dosing nitrates and phosphates to your tank. Dosing trace elements is another way of bringing colours out of your corals and also growing them. I make up these two solutions of trace elements. So I put one in this half of the bottle and then I put my number twos in the other side. And I dose these by hand to the tank during the week. So every day I'll put about 100 mils into the tank. But I suppose you can make them stronger and dose them over a month and hook them up to a dosing pump that would then you could dose as much as you want throughout the day. And this is how I dose it. I basically just dose it by hand. I just roughly put in about 100 mils and this is enough trace for the whole week. So I'm not going to overdose it as long as I don't add any more traces to this liquid for the week. I also dose strontium as well, because being an SPS tank, I think the acropores take a lot of strontium up. So I have to dose this, otherwise it's very low on my CPs. I dose 10 mils a week of this.
dipping and fragging corals. I found by dipping certain corals, especially these tenuous, has helped them grow. Um, these are the last ones that I dipped, but you can see that there's some new growth on the tips on the tenuous. Also, fragging corals, um, it just helps stimulate growth. So the bit that you cut, you can obviously frag and put onto a frag plug. But the bit that you fragged off the main colony will also then start to grow. And sometimes it just kickstart the coral into growing. My Pikachu coral fell off where it was mounted and it damaged half the coral. That bit that was damaged grew so much faster than the other piece because it stimulated that growth. Here's another one of my theories, taking out and heavily fragging corals. So if you've got a big plating red Montipora that's taken up all the elements, I used to have one of those and I took it out because I wanted to grow my other corals faster. And that will help your other corals grow in because that Montipora was taken up all of the elements, all of the alkalinity, all the trace. And that's what I've done here. I fragged my Montiporas. Um, because they needed it so the local fish shop got some good old frags there my raja rampage chalice that was heavily fragged and these two torts at the top here that's what it used to look like i took a small little frag of that it just slows down the faster growing corals so that other corals can compete and keep up with them testing and adjusting for parameters okay i test weekly you can see here my phosphate has come down a little bit. It's now 0.12 and my nitrate is just over 25. So here's my parameters at the moment. You can see my calcium and magnesium slightly low. So I've just dosed a little bit more of the two part of number two, which is calcium and magnesium into the tank so I can put the parameters back up to where it should be. I've also upped the calcium just by a little bit just because I want it sitting at about 4.25. So these parameters would have a slower growth than these ones. It's just because there's more elements in the water for the corals to take up and grow. Moving corals is another way of um, gaining a little bit more growth. If the coral's not happy where it is, there's no point of keeping it there. You may as well move it. It might need more light. It might need more flow. It just might not like the coral that it's sitting next to. I always mount my corals on a little bit of rock and I can then just move them around the tank wherever I want. So if it's not doing well in a certain place, I can just up and move it. And these are the more pro tips on growing corals. Um, like I said at the beginning of this video, this is the 5%. Before that, you need to make sure that you're doing all the basics well. And then these little bits are the extra way of colouring up corals and just getting that little bit more growth. Let me know in the comments if you want me to make a video on a certain subject and I'll see what I can do. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.